Anna Walner and Christina Matissic are friends and co-hosts who like to shop and test and critique stuff. In 1999, they created a successful TV series called The Shopping Bags. Then they launched another show, Anna and Christina's Grocery Bag, not because of their culinary skills, but because of their critiquing abilities. It is my pleasure to welcome savvy shoppers Anna Walner and Christina Matissic to Studio 4 to tell us more. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. And I didn't mean to knock your culinary skills. <laughs> you, you, you're not the first. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So could one of you cook a little bit before you started this? Anna was a much better cook. Well, I still you know, is. I, I used to think I could cook. This has been this show has been an incredibly humbling experience. I've learned mm. all that I don't know. I'm sure. <laughs> Which is a lot. <laughs> Take me back uh, to your news roots, because mm -hmm. many people don't know that you uh, are journalism school graduates, mm -hmm. uh, started out in hard news or entertainment mm -hmm. news. No entertainment no. news. No. None? In hard no. news. We both, we actually met at Global TV in the 90s. It was UTV at the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up being a late night news anchor, the 11.30 News, and Anna was out I was, I was in the field doing health reporting and filling in anchoring and, and it's amazing that we became friends actually because we were always competing for the same jobs. Great. Yeah, whenever but, the job posting came up it was like... <laughs> mm -hmm. But for some reason it didn't matter. So where did you meet or how often did you meet to uh, put this idea together, the first one? The shopping bags idea. What, did it happen over drinks in a hot tub? <laughs> On a mountain? <laughs> we had several conversations about it, but I think the day that it really gelled was at a little cafe on Camby, next to the Park Theatre. Kino. Kino Cafe. Mm -hmm. It's still there. Yes. There are belly dancers there. <laughs> well, who knew? <laughs> yes. And we just started saying, you know, we, we have an idea here that isn't on TV right now. We want to do a shopping show that's, you know, what to buy, but do it in a fun way. And um, we really want to work for ourselves. Mm. That was a big part of it. So you're both entrepreneurial. That's obvious. Mm -hmm. But what did you know about building a show? I know, I know you knew about shopping. We knew nothing about <laughs> building a show. But we definitely saw this niche that was potentially much bigger than this one show. We saw it as many shows, as a website, as products, as a, as a real genre. Um, that, that didn't exist. Um, and we convinced some people that we knew something about doing a show. Mm -hmm. um, because after all, you were on television. <laughs> exactly. That's right. we so thought, how hard can it be? We thought that was enough in the beginning. We knew how to put together a newscast, but of course putting together a half hour TV show, a little bit different. So it's been a learning experience in that regard. For I'm sure. sure. Do you remember any disasters that stand out? It wasn't live. It was live to tape. Yes. But still, I'm sure during the course of... Uh, I, I know there have been some in the, uh, in the cookbook kitchen, show, yes. <laughs> but uh, the shopping bags are somebody you put on and thought, why did we do that? Or we, I guess uh, you had, had the glory of editing. We so. did, and, and redoing things if something wasn't working. or mm -hmm. uh, We had like the odd product that we couldn't figure out how to test. I remember we tried to do tiles and the mm -hmm. logistics of getting something tiled. Uh, it, it turned out to be a story we, we didn't end up doing. And there's so okay. much that goes into production that the audience mm -hmm. doesn't see. I mean, we were constantly living with the challenge of staying on budget and getting the crew out on time and all the things that mm -hmm. you don't see on television yes. that go along with production. Exactly. Debbie Travis is a friend of mine, probably a friend of yours, mm -hmm. but a, a good friend of mine and she tells me horrendous stories because she's like building things. Right. And right. Or how about the phone call traveling. you get on Christmas Eve saying, I quit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one. That yeah. was a good That's one. That's always a good one to get. Yeah, great. <laughs> or I simply can't do it. You've mm -hmm. got the crew all set yes. up and they say, yes. you know, my aunt's in town. Exactly. I'm having dinner with a cousin, right. so I'll exactly. have to do it another time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but you looked at dresses and cars and computers and all of that. Yes, yes. Okay. Seven seasons of every product you can think of. So new show. The grocery Idea. bag is our new back to show. Kino. Was it Kinos? Uh, no. We didn't go back there. No, didn't maybe go back we'll there. Go back there. We'll be inspired Perhaps. by the belly dancers. <laughs> now you, you've turned it up a notch, you can probably go to the Four Seasons. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how did it lead to this? Uh, the uh, it, Obviously bags in the picture, but... 
We what happened? We had always planned to spin off into specific areas. So we also did a fashion and beauty show called Anna and Christina's Beauty oh, Call. I remember that. Um, mm -hmm. We had always planned to spin off into the areas of fashion, beauty, food, uh, and potentially other areas as well. So we're going down that road now. Mm -hmm. And it was a discussion about cookbooks and how, you know, do you ever find that you just make something it doesn't really work out? And <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> done there's, that. There's a show in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I think and we hear that all the time. People who can really relate to our struggles in the kitchen because what they say or the picture you see in the cookbook is very often not the result you get. And just because somebody is a great chef, it doesn't mean they're great at writing cookbooks. That's something mm. I've learned. Yes, you know, Karen McSherry is a great chef and great at writing cookbooks. She, is. she really is because uh, I can cook her stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's a good sign, <laughs> you know. And sometimes it's a beautiful dish, but you have to make two brown sauces and right, yes. uh, get capers from chili. Yeah, and, exactly. You, know. you really need to consider where you live when you're looking at different cookbooks. You know, sometimes they call for ingredients that you can't get in Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, wherever you're living. And it's not in the pantry. We have a, exactly. a dish at our house, we call it affectionately slut spaghetti. It's really <laughs> just like puttanesca. puttanesca. You know, yeah. but you can make it out of the cupboard on one yeah. of those dark and stormy nights. Right. And it's wonderful. Tonight. Mm -hmm. Tonight. <laughs> exactly. Uh, litmus test for the show. Well, first show. How did it begin? Oh, that was a struggle. Uh, well, we you know bit off more than we could chew on the first show. Our first cookbook was um, Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of like little book. Betty Crocker or something. And, and <laughs> not only was it that book, it was probably the most difficult recipe in the book. Was just one of the recipes we tested for the show, pâté de canard en croûte. Really? Mm -hmm. yes. Well, you could have just done Julia's. A chicken with butter. Right. <laughs> yes, well, we <laughs> didn't, and it was a disaster. It was mm. a disaster. While we were shooting it, the crew was killing themselves laughing, and so we thought, hey, we've mm -hmm. got a show. Yeah. Sure. And you know, anybody who has not tried to cook and look at the camera and talk at the same time doesn't know really how difficult that mm -hmm. can be. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I swear, well, I actually was cooking yesterday and I made a lot of mistakes all by myself, but mm -hmm. I like to think it's because we're talking and um, discussing things and, like, as you said, paying attention to the camera, a lot of things uh, go by the wayside. That's my defense. Yeah. <laughs> I know. She was it's talking to me. It's not my fault. There's a camera crew here. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Well, you know, Nicola Cavendish, who's a great actor, and she, on stage when she did Shirley Valentine, she has to fry an egg and make chips. Mm -hmm. and live right in live theater and she was like having she had to really practice yes. to remember her lines and get the egg fried and I know it's not a tough thing but and then the chips right and mm -hmm. all of that but mm -hmm. still keep going because when we cook in our own kitchens it's we different. don't have to talk to. No. Yeah. Well, we've had our directors say we'll be intensely engaged in doing chopping something and the director will be like do you guys want to say something? It's been like 20 minutes because we get so involved in what we're doing sometimes. Who picks the cookbooks? We all do. We have a team um, of directors and producers um, and ourselves and we, you know, we choose a selection of celebrity books, niche books, um, just really a representation of what's for sale. Across the world? Mm -hmm. um, around the world. Canada based? Around the world. Around the world. Yes. So you can uh, grab uh, Fine French Chef, perhaps? Mm -hmm. uh, dead or alive, or does it matter? As long as it's in print. Okay. Yes, and available. So, but the chef could have passed on. Absolutely, yes. yes. All right, so we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll see a little bit of you two uh, in the kitchen. Anna and Christina's grocery bag after this.